What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm doing a part two for the React Native series on drawing on a canvas with your React Native Expo app. Now this is a little more advanced, a little more niche, but I think it can have some useful use cases. So we'll be going over the case we have here, as you can see on the screen, where we have a variable length polygon that we can drag across our app and change essentially the sides of this polygon. It has four corners and we'll be going over how to create this in React Native Canvas. And the reason I'm making this video is because I had this use case on all my applications and I thought it was pretty niche and pretty hard to figure out, but eventually I did. So I'm showing the internets and I think people who have drawing applications might want to incorporate something like this as well in React Native Expo. So before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you watch part one of this video series, which I will link right here and go ahead and watch that. It gives some intro about this library and how to get set up using React Native SVG. So we're just gonna jump in straight into the code on how to do this variable length polygon in React Native Expo. So I'm just gonna move this to the right and we can see we're writing the code here. So a lot of users have been complaining on my channel that I don't zoom in enough. So I'm just gonna zoom in one more time for you guys. And so if you watch part one of my video series with this React Native Canvas, what we essentially did was we used this SVG library to render points on a screen using the SVG format to connect points and draw in the first part. But in this case, what we're doing is we're going to essentially render a shape that has variable length size, as you can see on the right there. So as opposed to the first part where we did some drawing, we're just going to render essentially first four points on the screen. So in order to do that with React Native SVG, what we have to do is we have to define a path and then we define D for the, the polygon path. And we have the fill, as you can see, it's gray and the stroke is gray and the stroke width is two. And by that, that's just the connections between the four points. And what we're doing is we're mapping vertices on the screen to a circle component, which is also part of React Native SVG, as you could see there. And then we're just filling those circles as black, as you could see right there, those four circles. And we are just giving it a key, giving it a radius, and we're giving it a vertex value, X and Y. And so you're asking, where does this X and Y come from? Well, I defined four vertices up here polygon vertices, set polygon vertices. And I just define them as a random coordinate at the beginning for my React Native application. And I just took the window width divided by four for the X of the first point, and same thing for the Y and so on. But really you can initialize those any way you want. So I initialize four polygon vertices. And initially it's just rendering them in, I believe the center of the screen. So if I go ahead and reset that, you could see it starts in the center. So now the question arises, how do we move a point based on my gesture in the app? So I can actually click on the screen and move this point. So how do we do that? It seems a little complicated, but trust me, it's actually not that complicated. So in order to do that, what we want to do is if you watch the first video, we have these on touch move functions. So we have on touch move and we have on touch end. And the first function is calling the on touch move polygon function. So this is the function that's triggered when we click onto the screen. So it's telling react to do something when the user clicks on the screen. Otherwise, once they let go of the screen, it's going to trigger the on-touch end polygon. So first let's talk about the on-touch move polygon function. And so what's happening there, it's getting the location of the user's gesture in the X and the Y. And what we want to do is when we click the screen, we want to see the nearest ver vertex to where the user clicks the screen. So we're setting a variable called active vertex. And what we're saying is if drag vertex index equals null, that means we're not selecting any vertex on the screen yet. We're going to get this active vertex. So active vertex equals get active vertex location X, location Y. And we're going to set the drag vertex, the one we're dragging to that active vertex. So what's going on in this get active vertex function? So what happens is the user clicks on a certain spot. So we pass an X and a Y. And we're going to use the distance formula to see which point is the closest to that point and if it's also within the threshold. So if I click up here, I can't drag anything because I'm far away. And the distance formula, although it does find that this is the closest point, I'm not within the 20 point threshold. So whereas if I go closer, let's say about here, it'll detect that the point is within the threshold. And using the distance formula, it calculates that this is the point I, I would like to select as the active vertex and it will allow me to start dragging it. So that was happening and it's really as simple as that. So if you guys aren't familiar with the distance formula, um, you could probably just search more about it online. We're not gonna go into too much detail about that, but it's, it's just to find the distance between two points on a, 
on a plane or really any dimension, you can use the distance formula, but we're just work, working with two dimensions on a canvas. So we're just using the distance formula here. We're doing some square root stuff to get the distance to a point. And if that distance is not um, below the threshold, we're going to eventually return at null. Okay, so that's what's happening in the active vertex button there. And so we set it. And as long as we have a drag vertex, we're going to pretty much update the vertex based on the location of the active event. So we get the polygon vertices. So this dot, dot, dot is just getting the, the polygon vertices and including them in this array. And then we're just going to set the updated vertex with the, the index of the dragged vertex index. So there's four indices because there's four corners there. So one, two, three, four. So let's say we are working with this corner right here. That's going to be index zero. So it'd be updated vertices zero equals X. So we're going to update the X location of that point and the Y location of that point. So pretty much as long as I'm dragging across the screen, the X and Y of this point are just going to continuously update until I let go, right? So it's just setting the polygon vertices. And finally, the last thing what happens is when I let go, it just sets the drag vertex index to null. So there's no longer um, an index I am selecting from any of these corners. So that's a quick rundown of essentially how I'm able to first detect the corner, or the point I am selecting, and then I'm also able to move it based on the event here, as you can see. And then I just update the, the polygon vertices, which are what is rendered down here. So the polygon vertices are actually what's being mapped down here, which shows us the shape on the screen. And of course, we have this reset button. And in this reset button, it just simply resets it to the original coordinates, which I set up here. So a little repetition there. You could probably clean that up. But overall, that's essentially how you get a dynamic polygon on the screen. And once again, I know this seems pretty niche, but it did have a really powerful use case on one of my uh, AI editing applications. And maybe people out there probably also have some advanced use cases for such a thing. I have seen it used on the internet. I mean, I've seen it in many paint apps that you have this sort of feature. It does seem intimidating at first, but really it's pretty simple with this SVG library. And you can also, of course, generalize this to other shapes, uh, multiple point polygons. It doesn't have to be four points. It could be three, four, five, and potentially you can even do circles with this. And as you can see, this use case can essentially generalize pretty well to other forms of shape drawing on the screen, which is really useful for really any drawing application. So I hope I really explained it well, because I know it, it's a little complicated, as I mentioned. If I was unclear about anything, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'm going to link this code because I know it's a lot here. And it's just one file, just the app.js file and the corresponding libraries. So essentially, if you just npm install the React Native SVG library and you put this into your app.js file, you should be good to go in that sense. We have the React Native library and React, which come packaged with React Native, so you should be good there. And once again, let me know if you have any questions. I will be quick to reply. I will post this code. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and take it easy.